Welcome back. Um, little chain of scenery today. I'll call this chapter self-assessment. And I'll go over what I mean by that. Um, I'll point out a couple things and, and what we're going to talk about. Um, at a high level, our past traumas, or even our parents' traumas, affect us in some shape or form. This could be how we look at money. This could be how we look at situations. And as much as we would hate to admit it, we do pick up a lot of things from our parents. So how your parents are financially or even when their careers has a significant impact on you. So I want to jump right into it. Uh, I saw a couple of comments of people, of, oh, what, what, what should I do? How can I do it? Um, so we'll just go over that. Um, this time I took some notes because I know my thoughts were kind of scattered last time. Let's talk about credit. Credit runs the world. And what I mean by that, it affects almost everything that you use day to day. Um, your credit score affects your interest rates. Your credit score affects you being able to get a house, being approved for a car. And even past that, let's say you get approved, it also affects how much you end up paying because of the varying interest rates. And I'm sure you guys heard of that saying, the rich stay getting richer um, and the poor stay poor. And the reason for that is rich people that have good credit scores pay significantly less interest than poor people. It's, cut, it's, it's really messed up when you think about it. The richer you are, the less you pay. And the poorer you are, the more you pay. How do you expect to get out of that circle? And this, this is what pisses me off, the way the world is set up. It's set up to, to make you fail. So let's talk about credit. If you have a bad credit score, it's going to make you have a much more difficult life. You're going to end up paying more um, for good opportunities you're, and even good areas. But having good credit also affects other things like a job. Did you know certain jobs run a credit score? And what it shows to them is how responsible you are as a person. And the lower your credit score, the less responsible you seem. Like It seems like you don't know how to take care of your own life. And when you get to certain positions, they give you a corporate card. Could you imagine getting a really good job? You made it through all the hoops and everything. And you can't even get a corporate card because your credit's so low. Let's talk about debit. If you're using your debit card for day-to-day -day purchases, you're an idiot. There's no benefit to using your debit card. Literally, you're not even protected if something go like goes wrong. You should only be using your credit card and then paying off things immediately from your debit account. The only time you should be using your debit card is to pull out money. Or say places that only accept debit cards like for example costco um they may or may not take care of credit cards so in that situation you have to use your debit but nine out of ten times you should be using your credit card and another reason for that is your credit card can make money for you for things you're going to spend anyways i have a capital one saver card and i get four percent back on food three percent back on groceries and 1 to 1.5% 1 back for everything else. And then for Uber and Uber Eats, I get 10% back as an added benefit. In a given year, you can make like 2 to 3K just using your credit card. That's insane. <laughs> I have friends who still use a debit card. And I, and I, I try to explain to them, listen, man, you can, you can get paid to do this. And their excuse is, oh, I don't want to pay the $95 for your year. What? If you're going to make $1,000, what is that $95 a year going to do? Nothing. So, all this to say, use your debit card to pull out cash. And use your credit card to build your credit score, get cash back. 
and just be protected. Like, if say something goes wrong, you can always report to your credit card, tell them the details, and most times they take care of you. They'll take off whatever fraudulent charges it might be, or anything else. And on the top of that, there's so many added benefits to having a credit card. Number two, expenses. If I were to ask you what your expenses are, and you have no idea, or you don't even, like, you can't even guess, that's a bad sign. You should know exactly how much you're spending, what you're spending every month. And if you're not keeping track, you'll probably end up losing money, or you probably end up spending money that you haven't even made yet, which is another bad thing. You should only spend money that you have available. I get it. If you're in a situation where you're using your credit cards to get you by, sure, that's okay. You want to get to a place where you can pay for things while you have the money and not put on your credit card and pay it off the next following paycheck or two. You should have an expense sheet. And you don't need to pay anybody to do this. You can literally go to Google Drive, open a spreadsheet, write down your paychecks, how much you get, if you get consistent paychecks. And then every month you should have things budgeted. How much your rent is, your internet, utilities, um, anything you signed up for, food, groceries, entertainment budget. All those things should be accounted for. So that as soon as your paycheck comes, you know exactly where the money's gonna be going. So build yourself expense sheet. I could probably give a more broad, like a in-depth uh, breakdown um, in the future but you should definitely have an expense sheet and the goal here is you want to live below your means living below your means is spending money that you have and having money left over living above your means is spending money you don't have and that's like putting things in your credit card and hoping to pay it off in the near future um, and you might like rack up interest charges and, and so on and so forth Let's see what else we got here. Savings. Money that's just sitting and not accruing any type of cash back or rewards. It's just money just sitting. And obviously everyone's financial situation is different, right? So if you have a bunch of savings, you don't want it to just be sitting and doing nothing. You want to put it into an asset that is going to grow in value. Or going to retain the val the original value that it held. Um, I'll give you some examples. Like when the economy is going bad, most people have gold and they'll cash out their gold because when the dollar is weak, gold is stronger. And when the gold is stronger, the dollar is weak. It goes back and forth. Or index funds, for example. Those are things that have consistently gone up every year. And uh, some people will say, oh, you know, the market goes up, the market goes down. It's only a loss if you sell. Like, if you don't have the patience to wait to sell something, then this is meant for you. You need to have serious discipline when it comes to these things. Let's talk about... What is this? Dreams. <laughs> They always tell you to follow your dreams. And that's a huge lie. It's a huge lie. And I say that because it's easy to follow your dreams when you have a good base. That means like your parents are in a financially fit position to give you opportunities. If you're not in that position, following your dreams could be a trap. You end up spending a lot of time and effort into something that might not make sense. And to be honest, if I were to have kids and I want to set them up successfully, I would tell them to look into different fields and look into the long-term salary bands for those fields. And some people might think that's counterintuitive. You know, it's like, oh, I'm shutting down their dreams. No, I think that once you get to a position where you're making enough money, you have enough money to do other things and like actually focus on things that you love. But when it comes down to it, you should get a job that has a good market share, that has a good salary, good benefits, good bonuses. Because this will set you up 
to follow your actual dreams, whatever that may be. And there's only a few places and sections that you can do that. Tech, medical, and a few others. But look at the trends. Look at the the long-term goals of some of these trends and see how where, which way it's going. Um, what I mean by that, look at technology. For example, AI. Somebody has developed that. Somebody has to test that. Somebody has to market that. You want to look at the future and see where you want to be. And then the last thing I want to kind of cover um, is interviewing. If you're a shy person, you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. If you don't speak up, you're going to miss out on getting the money that you want. If you're not good at talking to people, it's going to be very difficult to get ahead in life. The one thing I learned, it's not necessarily your skills that get you the job. Because usually when you're applying for a job, you have the skills. It's your communication style. It's your personality. I've been in a position where I've interviewed people and I realized I'm not hiring them based off their skills. Because no matter what job you go to, you're going to have to learn those skills on the job. And every company does things differently. It's what I like working with this person. Is this person going to make my job difficult? Is this person going to make my job easy? Does this person know how to easily convey what they're trying to say? In a clear, concise, diplomatic manner. That's what really matters. So if you watch my video till the end. What I want you to take away from this is. You got to be on top of your credit. Especially your credit score. You need to know how to interview. You need to know what you want to do. And you need to separate your dreams. Versus reality. Um. Again, this is my first time making YouTube videos. Um, and the reason I'm hiding my identity is because I, I don't want to be famous. I don't, I don't care to be famous. But I see so many people struggling. So many people looking at videos on finance, how to get rich, and all these things. And there's so much misinformation out there. So many lies. I just want to help people. Generally, I, I really want to help people. And I just want the good karma back. So... Every time I get a thousand views on a video, I'll post another video. Just so I know that what I'm saying is helping people and people will actually want to see this content. And, you know, post questions, post post, current, post concerns like in the, in the comments so I can just, you know, know what to talk about in the coming videos. Um, and we'll take it from there. So I hope to see you again.